Have you ever wondered why wealth seems to accumulate more with the rich, while the poor often struggle to catch up? It's a question that has puzzled economists and social scientists alike for centuries. The distribution of wealth, it seems, is not always a simple matter of hard work and effort. There are unseen forces at play, subtle undercurrents that shape the economic landscape in ways we're only beginning to understand. Consider for a moment the disparity between the ultra-wealthy and those living paycheck to paycheck. It's more than just a difference in income, it's a difference in economic power, opportunity, and influence. These gaps in wealth are not accidental, they're systemic, embedded in the very fabric of our economies. But what if we told you there's a theory that might explain this disparity, a concept that sheds light on why the rich get richer and the poor stay poor? Well, there's a concept that might explain this phenomenon, it's called the Cantillon Effect. Intrigued? Stay with us. So, what exactly is this Cantillon Effect we're talking about? Well, let's dive right into it. The Cantillon Effect is a crucial concept in economics that has a profound impact on our lives, whether we realize it or not. It's named after Richard Cantillon, an 18th century Irish-French economist who made significant contributions to the field of economics. At its core, the Cantillon Effect describes the change in relative prices resulting from a change in money supply. Sounds a bit complex, right? Well, let's break it down a bit. Imagine you're in a room full of people and you start handing out money. The people closest to you, the ones who get the money first, suddenly have more purchasing power. They can buy more goods which can drive up demand and potentially increase prices. But what happens to the people further away who get the money last, or perhaps not at all? They're left dealing with the increased prices but without any increase in their own purchasing power. That's the Cantillon effect in a nutshell. It's about how changes in money supply don't affect everyone equally. Some people benefit and others, well, they might not be so lucky. This effect is particularly relevant when we talk about monetary policy. When a central bank like the Federal Reserve injects new money into the economy, it doesn't just magically appear in everyone's bank account at the same time. It enters the economy at specific points, often through banks or other financial institutions. Those who receive this new money first, such as big corporations or wealthy individuals, can use it to buy assets or goods before prices rise. Meanwhile, those who receive this new money later or not at all, might find themselves facing higher prices without any increase in their own wealth. This can lead to wealth disparities and contribute to economic inequality. To sum it up, the Cantillon effect is a theory that explains how the creation and distribution of money can have a ripple effect on the economy, affecting prices and wealth distribution. In simpler terms, it's all about who gets the money first. Let's imagine a scenario. You live in a small town with a local bakery. The bakery, renowned for its delicious pastries and warm bread, has been a staple of your community for years. One day the bakery receives a large sum of money from a generous benefactor. This unexpected windfall is the beginning of our journey into understanding the Cantillon effect. The bakery, now flush with cash, decides to expand. It hires more bakers, buys more ovens, and sources more ingredients. This sudden increase in demand boosts the local economy. The grain farmers supplying the bakery, the hardware store selling the ovens, even the local newspaper running ads for new bakery positions, they all benefit from the bakery's good fortune. As these businesses thrive, they also start spending more. The grain farmer might upgrade his tractor, the hardware store owner may renovate her shop, and the newspaper editor could hire more journalists. This is the ripple effect of the bakery's windfall, and it's a positive one. However, there's a flip side to this coin. The bakery's success creates a higher demand for grain, driving up its price. The hardware store's renovation means higher prices for its goods, and the newspaper's expansion leads to more ads, pushing up the cost of advertising. As these prices rise, other businesses and consumers in the town, those not directly benefiting from the bakery's windfall, start to feel the pinch. This is where we see the Cantillon effect in action. The bakery's newfound wealth didn't just affect its own operations, it influenced the entire town's economy. Those closest to the bakery, the grain farmer, the hardware store owner, the newspaper editor, they profited. But those further away, the other businesses and consumers, they faced higher prices without any corresponding increase in their income. And what about the benefactor who gave the bakery the money in the first place? Well, he's part of the Cantillon effect too. His decision to give the money to the bakery instead of, say, the local school or hospital, shaped the direction of the town's economy. It's a clear example of how the initial injection of money and where it's injected can have far-reaching consequences. 
In essence, the Cantillon effect highlights the uneven distribution of wealth that can occur when money is injected into an economy. It's not just about who gets the money, but also about who gets it first. Those who receive or can access the new money early, like our bakery, can benefit greatly, while those further down the line may actually be worse off. So, as we can see, the bakery's windfall has ripple effects throughout the town's economy. That, in essence, is the Cantillon effect. Now that we've seen the Cantillon effect in action, let's unpack the key points. Firstly, the Cantillon effect is a theory that explores how changes in the supply of money can impact wealth distribution within an economy. When the supply of money increases, perhaps due to government policy or central banking decisions, those who receive the new money first stand to benefit the most. They can invest or spend that money before the overall prices in the economy have had a chance to rise. This leads us to the second point. The effect is named after Richard Cantillon, an 18th century economist, who noted that the impact of increasing the money supply isn't evenly distributed. It's a bit like pouring honey onto a stack of pancakes. The top pancake gets the most honey, while those further down get less and less. In the same way, the first recipients of the new money enjoy the most benefits, while those further down the chain see less advantage and perhaps even suffer as prices rise. Third, the Cantillon effect plays a significant role in economic inequality. When new money enters the economy, it can create a wave of inflation. However, this inflation isn't evenly distributed. Those who receive the new money first can buy goods and services at existing prices. But as the new money filters through the economy, prices start to rise. Those who receive the money later, or not at all, face higher prices without a corresponding increase in their own wealth. Finally, it's important to note that the Cantillon effect isn't an isolated phenomenon. It interacts with other economic factors and policies. For instance, it can amplify the effects of fiscal and monetary policies, making them more beneficial for some and less so for others. So, to sum up, the Cantillon effect is a crucial concept that helps explain why changes in the money supply don't affect everyone equally. It shows how such changes can benefit those at the top of the economic ladder, while those further down may find themselves worse off. In other words, the Cantillon effect is a major player in economic inequality. So, what does the Cantillon effect mean for you? Well, let's delve into that. You see, the Cantillon effect isn't just an abstract economic concept. It has real-world implications that can impact your lifestyle, your financial decisions, and even your future. Imagine you're a worker in a factory, your paycheck stays the same, but the prices of the goods you need to buy keep going up. Why? Well, the Cantillon effect might be at play. When new money is introduced into the economy, it doesn't reach everyone at the same time. Those who get it first, usually the banks and big businesses, benefit. While those who get it last, like our factory worker, see prices rise before their wages do. Now, let's consider you're a saver. You've been diligently putting away a portion of your earnings for a rainy day or your retirement. But due to the Cantillon effect, the value of your savings could be eroding over time. How? When new money enters the economy, it can cause inflation, which erodes the purchasing power of your savings. So, you might be thinking, what can I do? Well, understanding the Cantillon effect is the first step. It can guide your financial decisions. For example, you might consider investing in assets that tend to increase in value over time, like real estate or stocks, to protect your wealth from inflation. But remember, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. The Cantillon effect is just one piece of a much larger economic puzzle. It's crucial to learn about other economic principles, stay informed about current events, and consult with a financial advisor to make the best decisions for your personal circumstances. In essence, the Cantillon effect is a reminder of the importance of financial education. It shows us that economic forces can have a profound impact on our daily lives, even if we don't see them in action. Understanding the Cantillon effect can help you make sense of the economic world around you, so keep asking questions and keep learning. Until next time, stay curious. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.